In Washington, ghost-like objects dart across the radar screen at the CAA Traffic Control Center at National Airport for several hours, traveling more than 100 miles an hour. Air Force jet fighters spend several hours chasing the objects plotted on the radar scope. Something else is out there. There's something else out there, okay. Of all the banks and braes of Bonnie Scotland, none holds more fascination than the murky waters of Loch Ness. Tell me, do you think there is life on other planets? Well, I'm not quite yes. sure, but I suppose there would be. No, he seems definite. He seems definitely. Definite. How do you see this life and where? Oh, I've seen a flying saucer. Blackwater Media presents Dark Fall. Real life encounters with the paranormal and the unexplained. Dear Dr. Lester, I've heard you relate a number of other people's encounters with Dogman, so I wanted to share this story with you. I was out with my two brothers and my dad fishing late at night. I was about 12 or 13 at the time. My brother William was older and Jason was younger. We were on a bridge that stood over a large body of water. I was honestly becoming a bit bored since we'd been fishing for the past hour. The only real exciting thing that happened was when my dad hooked a skate. It was a kick watching him struggle to maintain the pole. He let out a mean stream of curses when his line snapped signaling his loss in the battle. I remember him saying, I lost that goddamn son of a bitch. Now this particular area was surrounded by forests and was beautifully lit up by the night sky. I would look over the bridge's wall countless times just to see the moon's light reflecting off the dark, steady water. The bridge wasn't made of wood but concrete, and it was strange looking now that I think back on it. Instead of being only about three feet off the surface of the water, it was maybe ten or fifteen. I assumed that it was made for walking or riding across. It was narrow, but just wide enough to fit three average people side by side. So like I said, we weren't having that much fun. William led Jason and I down to a large blackberry bush. It was set just next to the beginning of the bridge so my dad could still see us. With our group we had four dogs. It seems like a lot I know but we currently still have only two of our dogs. Tragedies happen I suppose. Now two of the dogs were German Shepherds, which by the way are still the two that we have currently. Other than them, we had a Border Collie and a Foxhound Akita Mix. Very beautiful dog. Tall and slender, but with just the right amount of muscle. Fast as hell, too. So keep up with me on this, because it might get confusing, but it's totally necessary. The female German Shepherd was Charlie. The male German Shepherd was Simon. The Foxhound Mix was Buddy. And the Border Collie was Sophie. Okay, so we got that down. Now back to the situation. We weren't really collecting berries, it was more of a pick and eat thing. Every now and then one of us would shout out, startled by the sudden prick of the finger on a thorn. Charlie and Buddy were my personal dogs leaving Jason and Sophie and my dad with Simon. Now as I was feeling around for berries with Charlie sitting at my side, Jason left to take some berries to my dad. Before I could turn back around to face the bush, something caught my eye something big. Now my first thought was that it was a tree. That is, until it turned its head towards me. It locked eyes with me. I felt paralyzed by fear. I barely managed to wave my arm around in William's general direction trying to catch his attention. He must have noticed as he responded with a quiet, yeah. Turning to see what I was looking at, he began to say something, but immediately stopped. All emotion drained from his pale face. Who is that? He asked me. I could only mumble, what? Not that I didn't hear him. I was correcting him. This thing was massive. Its hair was a wild mix of brown and gray. I could see his eyes, and I thought to myself, oh, fuck. They were wide and human-like. From where I stood, 
they almost looked orange. The rest was basically a silhouette. I could feel the presence of the dogs next to us. Charlie snarled, stalking closer bit by bit. I wanted to jump at her, do anything to keep her away from it. Simon was staring intently as was Buddy, but kept his position in front of William and me. This thing was standing on its hind legs, but looked like a big dog, at least something with long pointed ears. It had long fingers or more than likely claws. It leaned forward a bit, but not much, almost as if it wanted to intensify its glare or maybe just get a better look at us. I jumped at the sound of Charlie snapping her jaws at the thing before bounding towards it. I nearly choked on my breath as Buddy followed her. I frantically looked around for Simon who was cowering behind William with his head bowed down growling. William started to run after them. And to be honest, I started to cry from both fear and slight anger. I heaved a breath and willed my legs to run as fast as I could. Now William was on the track team and played baseball, but he was the very least of my worries because I was too. It was the fact that we were chasing two dogs and a terrifying wolf creature. Now that I think back on what I did, I must have been insane. Nevertheless, I chased them in the woods, and we eventually slowed to a stop as we saw the dogs ahead of us. They were standing defensively, barking and snarling at the wolf thing. It dropped down on four legs. The dogs fell back as though they'd been pushed and scurried away from it as an ear-piercing scream sounded. Buddy took off back to the bridge where we later found him, and Charlie crouched in front of William and I. The scream sound strangled unlike anything I'd ever heard. I'd let out a fearful shout before I felt something grab hold of my wrist, which, believe me, did not help my situation. William was trying to pull me along, trying to get us the hell out of there. All three of us ran towards the bridge. The whole way there, it felt as though the creature was right on my heels, me being in the back by maybe a foot. Once we were free from the trees, we did not stop. We bolted into the water. William and I, Charlie, merely followed, not knowing what the hell to do. I whipped my head around as we stopped and saw nothing but pine trees. I choked on my tears, feeling both relieved and terrified of what had just gone down. Back on the bridge, we told our dad. He called it bullshit, that we were just playing a prank. But you heard the scream, right? We'd ask him. He would blow us off completely and continue fishing. He was, and still is, a skeptic. Gotta see it to believe it. That was his motto when it comes to the paranormal. Now, I honestly don't know what that thing was, and I don't think I want to. Of course, part of me is curious, but all of me wants to know what I'm dealing with so I have more information on the subject. I know for a fact that many other people have had similar experiences. And based on all the stories that I've heard or read about, I'm pretty sure that what we encountered that night was a dog man.